our job as a marketplace is to connect more and more home seekers with the best partners for them. Mm -hmm. And personalizing that partnership connection is actually not an elementary thing. And so if we can connect the two, we really can inflect people's home search journeys for the better. Hey everyone, Craig Veroni with Real Broker BC Limited here. I am sitting down today with the charismatic president of REW, Simon Bray. Now, I, I have to confess, Simon, I've, I've been wanting to sit down and do an inter with, interview with you for years. Uh, and I was thrilled when um, Justin reached out to me and asked, would you be interested in interviewing Simon? There was, uh, there was no hesitation. It was an absolute yes. Uh, so thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you here at the REW workshop. Yeah. Why don't we start with, with just talking a little bit about REW's journey so far? Because you've come quite a ways uh, from where, where REW first started. Yeah, I mean, REW is a fantastic business. You know, it's got a, it's got a rich heritage and a, and a legacy here in BC. Uh, started out as Real Estate Weekly, this print publication that would print, you know, hundreds of pages of real estate. Uh, on a weekly basis, you know, distribute that across the mainland. Uh, and it's grown from there. You know, that was 40 years ago. Uh, the business is now uh, still REW, but real estate works. And it's all about digital experiences and it's about bringing the real estate market to home seekers wherever they may be, uh, usually in the palm of their hand. So tell us, what do you think sets REW apart? from other real estate portals. Well, it's a fascinating industry, this, uh, particularly in Canada, because the, the, the lines between a real estate portal, this idea of a real estate marketplace where you can uh, experience the entire real estate uh, industry in one platform uh, versus a real estate brokerage, those, those borders are quite gray, particularly in North America. You know, brokerage uh, businesses, because of their access to listings and information and data, tend to extend into the portal experience. Right. And the portal experience <laughs> tends to, you know, explore and experiment in the brokerage space. And so um, when I think about REW, what really defines us and what sets us apart is that we pick uh, the marketplace side of that experience and we really lean into that. Uh, we want to bring the entire market to home seekers. Uh, we want to bring uh, real estate information. Yeah. MLS listings are, of mm -hmm. course, a core piece of yeah. that real estate ecosystem. <laughs> but there's rentals, there's uh, new developments and all the projects coming out of the ground. There uh, is BC assessment data, there's sales valuation data, uh, and there's, of course, original content, you know, great content like the type of thing you produce. Uh, and Representing that entire industry and that entire ecosystem is very much uh, the heart of what we want to bring. Um, so it's not just about uh, trying to figure out uh, how it works for uh, one agent over another. It's about representing the entire industry to home seekers. And to be honest, when you're a home seeker looking for a home, you don't think of real estate as an industry, you know? You think about it as an opportunity to find a new home. Exactly. And we provide that first port of call, that entry point for them. Our experience is all about driving towards a better home seeker search experience, a better home seeker adventure. This is a nice segue into my next question because you talked all about the user experience and how the user experience is integral in the REW platform. Tell us why that is so important. Well, I mean, if you actually look at the REW brand, you'll see that uh, that great logo. That's our lodestar. It's effectively this idea of an inspiration and a guide. Uh, and REW is meant to be that. We're meant to be the ultimate guide in a home seeker's real estate adventure. You know, kind of pointing them uh, to the true north, giving them the information and the, and the uh, guidance that they need to make the right real estate decision. And I know you're all about that. I mean, the content that you produce is very much around guiding people to make the right decision in their personal real estate journey. Yeah. And so when you talk about user experience for us, that is the, the kind of the delivery platform or the delivery vehicle for that uh, guided experience. And uh, you know what it's like. If you use a platform and it feels janky or it disappoints you in terms of the amount of information on offer, uh, you lose confidence. And ultimately, a guide gives you confidence for something that's hard to do. And so user experience, that 
that equips, enables, and gives people that, that confidence, that inspired feeling that you get that, hey, I can handle this, I can do it. That's ultimately the user experience we want to create at REW. And, and I think that we do a fairly good job already of doing that, but it's forever in front of us. Like, how do we push the experience forward? I read an interview uh, that you did uh, probably about a year, year and a half ago, and I loved what you, you said in this interview. You said, we see many companies in the US saying that real estate should be easy. You should be able to buy Amazon style, buy a house in one click, but real estate transactions were never meant to be easy. They're important, infrequent, hard earned transactions, so they can afford to be complex. The role of a real estate platform is less about simplifying the journey and more about making it a pleasant and enjoyable one. And I absolutely loved that quote. Yeah, it's something that we feel very, very strongly about here at REW. It's sort of central to our yeah. whole uh, business thesis, central to the service that we provide to home seekers and to uh, key partners in the industry, agents, developers. We view this as an adventure. We really view this as a worthwhile endeavor for a lot of people to get involved in home ownership, to get involved in the real estate market. But we acknowledge that like every good adventure, there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be a lot of challenges. There's going to be this emotional aspect to those challenges that you have to overcome. And so when, when you read back or play back a quote like that, uh, to me, it, it really reinforces that belief that uh, we're not trying to make the process simple. Uh, it's not a simple process. It's a fairly complicated, complex process. You know, real estate is not commoditized like other products. Every single real estate offering is unique yep. and differentiated from every other. Uh, and the buyers are unique and differentiated from every other. And so their process of purchasing is going to be unique. Uh, you know, mortgage options and the right agent for them and the buying terms and the stage of the market and the neighborhood that it's in. All of these things influence how that real estate experience is going to look and feel uh, yeah. to the home seeker. And so by acknowledging that, by trying to build a marketplace that brings in all of those different inputs and, and different outputs, uh, we hope that we create a, a better experience for those home seekers. Uh, the the one-click property shopping kind of concept that you hear talked about a lot, I just feel that that is a way to uh, flatten the real estate market experience uh, unnecessarily. It's going to look different, it's going to look uh, interesting, it's going to be challenging, it's going to be rewarding. Uh, so what we endeavor to do is remove some of that friction, yeah. and introduce you to the best people, the best partners to help you do it, because ultimately your experience is going to be uh, driven by the type of people that you engage with, whether that's your conveyances, your agent, your mortgage providers, uh, as well as uh, any of the, the role players in that industry that you, that you touch through the transaction. Ultimately, it comes back down to that uh, real estate isn't simple, it can be hard, it can be challenging, it's certainly gonna be personal. Uh, and we try and make that personal experience a great experience. So we've been predominantly a for sale platform for a number of years, but a couple of years ago, we realized that, you know, rental is a huge part of the conversation. The moment you did, I took notice. Once REW came up with that portal and I was able to take a look at it and go, holy cow, this is phenomenal. So that your link to your portal is built into every video that I put out on YouTube. It's built into a lot of the correspondence that I use on uh, in emails to people because the moment that they reach out to me and they're in inquiring about rentals, I give them two options. I say you can you can chat with with my friend Joshua, you know, at, at Sycamore Property Rentals, or if you want to do it on your own this is the best place to do it, and that's REW Rentals. And I'm pleased uh, to hear that you can recommend it. Uh, oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Daily. <laughs> you guys recently launched REW Money. And for those of you who don't know what that it is, Simon is here to tell us all about it. Please tell us what REW Money is. Obviously, a really big component of the real estate transaction is that you generally don't buy real estate with your own money. Uh, somebody has to help you out. and. There is a fantastic lending environment in Canada uh, and 
you know, I think we've got upwards of 100 lenders uh, on the REW Money platform. And it gives home seekers access to those different lenders uh, at the point that they need to look for mortgage financing. Uh, and we felt, you know, considering that home search starts on our platform, the very next question after you've looked at a few homes is, well, what can I afford? And it made sense for us to go further in answering that question. Mm. And so we integrated our own REW Money team, a team of specialist underwriters uh, that can help answer those questions for home seekers. And that's what we've been doing for the last few months uh, since we launched it. We've been having conversations with home seekers, learning about their uh, unique individual personal uh, requirements around finance and trying to match them with solutions in the market that could best serve their dream of becoming a homeowner. I would love for you to elaborate a little bit more on why you launched REW Money. Home Seeker really starts with that question, uh, you know, what properties on the market? Yeah. What am I interested in? What's gonna suit my needs? And that's where the real estate conversation generally starts. The very next question they have is obviously about financing and different finance options. Uh, what can I afford becomes, uh, if not a vocalized question, a, a thought very much in the back of their mind. Right. We've taken this approach with REW Money to have that conversation with us. You know, remove the taboo about what you can and can't afford. Talk to a mortgage advisor early in the journey. Equip yourself with that knowledge and that insight. Uh, and then it makes your realtor experience better. It makes your property search experience better and ultimately should move you into a home sooner. I love that answer. And it leads me to my next question because mortgages are a difficult business. Yep. And you know, that's not an easy space to be in. It's a difficult business. So why would agents refer their clients to REW Money? Ultimately, the solutions that people are looking for become more and more important yeah. in a difficult market like this. And our access to a lot of different lenders yeah. of all sorts of different types uh, offers our clients uh, innovative solutions. Another big reason that agents would refer clients to us is we know how important it is to have that mortgage conversation earlier in the process. Uh, this is one of the things, you know. Uh, yeah. Waiting until you're making an offer on a home yeah. and discussing whether that offer should be subject to financing terms or not feels way too late in the game. And so what we've tried to do is introduce it earlier to home seekers mm -hmm. uh, and we encourage realtors to introduce it to their home seeker clients earlier in the process. And so our mortgage team is geared around that. It's not transaction hungry. It's there to provide advice to clients well ahead of when they need it. And that's how we built the entire service offering. So you'll even see simple tactical details on the platform like if you're on the mortgage calculator, it doesn't say uh, get this mortgage now. It says let's talk. And the whole idea is let's start a conversation. Let's equip your client with the information about mortgages that matter. And then the transaction should be easier. Right. At least that's the thesis. I'm sure many people out there are curious to know how REW money is different from the other mortgage brokers out there in Canada. Well, I think the difference really comes in integrating home search and mortgage search. As I said, mortgage uh, is, a, uh, is, is pretty much a standard in home purchases here in Canada. Mm -hmm. Very few people are rolling around buying <laughs> homes for cash. I'm sure your clients do, but, but certainly the people on our Ew. platform like a little bit of assistance. Mm -hmm. um, and that mortgage offering is quite diverse. Right. Uh, and so what we try and do is just bring all of those options to the market, but bring it to the home seeker at the right point in their journey. Yeah. As I said, doing it after you've made an offer and when you're under pressure to, to you know, remove terms on a, on a sale agreement uh, feels like the wrong part of the process. Doing it earlier in the journey, aligning it with your home search experience, that's where I think we differ. We're able to do things that are interesting and innovative around, oh, I'm pre-qualified for this, so let me refine my search criteria like this mm. and speed up that process of finding the right home that matches my affordability profile. What's so fascinating about REW and the REW platform is the, the data that you have access to. It's, it is phenomenal. It allows you to do predictive analysis of, of things. Um, but I love to talk about sort of just looking back mm. on 2022, what were the most searched neighborhoods mm. of 2022? It's actually fascinating for me because you anticipate that that uh, answer is gonna change 
quarter by quarter, uh, mm -hmm. half year by half year, certainly year by year, right. you'd get a different spread of neighborhoods. But uh, we've seen a consistent kind of top 10, certainly a consistent top three for three years. And that's uh, White Rock, incredibly popular. You know, people love looking at that neighborhood. Uh, don't know about buying in it, but certainly looking at it, and we can come back to that. Uh, Kitsilano, also a very popular neighborhood, and Cloverdale. Mm. Uh, so we see the same uh, neighborhoods featuring in this top 10 and certainly in this top three. Uh, and I think it speaks to the type of lifestyle that people are looking right. for and the interest they have in the homes in those neighborhoods. Yeah. If you look at the transaction data, it's obviously a little bit different. You know, you see a lot more purchases in, in other neighborhoods, uh, particularly neighborhoods in Richmond or Burnaby or Coquitlam. I mean, they've all been doing very well. Uh, but from an interest point of view, and, and our platform is, you know, 50% interest and 50% action. Right. And, and in the interest category, there's definitely a lot of interest in those lifestyle oriented neighborhoods. Are those the same top three most searched neighborhoods over the past month? They still are. Wow. I mean, they rank right up there in the top five. I think the challenge that we've seen in January so far is just the listing challenge. Right. Uh, you know, inventory is very, very low. And if you think of a marketplace like ours, it's ultimately a meeting place between the inventory that's on the market and the home seekers that are in the market. And if there isn't inventory, then the engagement statistics that we measure, things like views on listings, uh, uh, leads on listings, uh, contact and inquiries made on listings, all of those numbers and statistics are driven by, in part, the listings on the market. Right. Uh, you know, if people uh, are very excited about a particular neighborhood, but they come and there's not very much inventory or the inventory is old, then the engagement stats actually skew uh, mm. and, and they don't look as favorable. And that's a little bit of the story, the tale of the tape, if you like, that we're seeing now is the markets that are opening up inventory are markets that are seeing a lot of engagement mm. because you know the demand may be in this particular neighborhood but if a bunch of listings that are interesting and attractive pop up in this neighborhood well the demand just moves and um, so we're seeing a little bit of that at the beginning of 2023. Are there uh, certain neighborhoods that are set to explode um, in the next few months. There are some uh, pockets of excellence, some pockets of excitement mm. uh, that we see, and those are very much driven, as I said, by this listing supply. Oh, okay. So, so if you're looking for markets that are gonna move, it'll be markets that have new housing coming onto mm. the market. And the best predictor of that is you know, units under construction, uh, pre-sale projects, uh, those kinds of markets, uh, and if, and if if we could steal a little bit from my previous answer about which neighborhoods are already popular, you can look at um, you know, Surrey and the markets, the sub-markets within Surrey always do well on our platform. Right. And if you overlay the new housing stock that's coming into the market, uh, I think there are upwards of 30,000 units uh, certainly planned for release in the greater Surrey neighborhoods. Um, and I would say markets like Cloverdale and Fleetwood become very, very exciting markets when you see this convergence of demand and potential supply. Mm. Uh, that I think will fuel a really exciting market uh, in the next, certainly in the next few years. How early it starts is a good question. What are the trends that you're seeing now? Mm. So one of the most exciting trends that I think started pre-pandemic, the pandemic really accelerated it, was the adoption of home ownership by millennials. Mm. Uh, so we still see that trend continuing, but I have to say just in the last six months, the greatest burden of this current interest rate cycle has landed on the shoulders of millennials. You know, those people that haven't yet been in the market are really priced out of the market yeah. at the moment. And so that's probably the most concerning trend from a macro point of view, is this uh, millennials really wanting to get into the market, showing a huge amount of interest on our platform in real estate, uh, but being priced out. Mm -hmm. and, and we see that through the pre-qualification data, we see that through the mortgage data that we're working in our REW Money team. People uh, enthusiastic and, and committed to the process until they find out that their affordability and their property lifestyle choice is a mismatch. Right. And then I think they get a bit despondent and, yeah. and that keeps them out. So that's a trend that is worth watching to see how that develops. 
I'm hoping that uh, you know prices don't move too much and affordability improves for that end of the market because that is the most critical macro driver I think to the real estate market in the Canadian main Canadian metros in the next uh, five years yeah. is that millennial market really engaging and connecting and then another thing I mentioned uh, the the sort of trend away from the city during the pandemic yeah. and back towards the city that's yeah. definitely an observable trend now pretty much you can see it in our search uh, interest and search data you can also see it in the sales data and the pricing uh, appreciation data so so that's a, a very interesting trend to watch i'd love to know and i'm sure everyone else would love to know what are rew's goals through 2023 and beyond. Original content we see is critical to you know bring new entrants into the market, really inform them and equip them for the process that's about to unfold, uh, and just give them the type of experience that they expect in pretty much every category. There, you know, cars, cameras, phones, uh, fashion. There's yeah. there's this real insight and analysis that you can get from the creator economy that supports it. And in real estate, we feel that it's such a huge and important decision for a lot of people and it's supported probably the least uh, in terms of great original content so so that's one area that i think is a big focus for rew going forward the other side and this speaks to our marketplace dna and the service that we provide in the broader industry is that we see the realtor and the downstream partners that a home seeker is going to work with during their transaction mm -hmm. as a key differentiator of their experience. If you have a great realtor, you have a great real estate experience. Yeah. And so our job as a marketplace is to connect more and more home seekers with the best partners for them. Mm -hmm. And personalizing that partnership connection mm -hmm. is actually not an elementary thing. You know, you've got to know enough about the individual home seeker, mm -hmm. and you've got to know enough about the partners. And we believe REW is best placed to do that. We know a lot about the personal real estate journey, and we know a lot about great partners in the real estate ecosystem. And so if we can connect the two, we really can inflect people's home search journeys for the better. To summarize, content and connection are probably the two key pillars that we're investing in and that we're moving forward to. Thank you so much. Thank you, Craig.